In the last two years, Israel has been thrown into a political whirlpool. One election cycle after another, four campaigns within two years, no one managed to form a long-lasting coalition. And Benjamin Netanyahu, elected prime minister in 2009, has managed to stay in power. And then came these two. The up-and-coming duo of Naftali Bennett and Yair Lapid have already collaborated in the past, but now their partnership seemed to have done the inconceivable, unseat Netanyahu from premiership after 12 years in power. A former director general of the settlers' lobby organization Yesha Council, Bennett is considered a right-wing nationalist leader. Lapid, on the other hand, is a former news anchor and the son of a Holocaust survivor, and he finds himself as a centrist. Where do Bennett and Lapid, the politicians who aspire to lead Israel for the foreseeable future, stand on key issues? Their interviews on Conflict Zone from 2015 and 2017 can give us a clue. The big picture is that we're in our Jewish home here, okay? It's been our Jewish home for about 3,800 years. Even in the Arab world, they know now that there's no way of going back to 1967 or, or to 1948. We, things have changed. Despite coming from two opposing political blocs, they actually are not too far apart. What do they have in common and where do they disagree? Join us as we dig into the Conflict Zone archive to learn more about the views they expressed in the past and, more importantly, how that might affect their actions in the future. A long-term solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is one of the most contested issues between Bennett and Lapid. What will the new government mean for Palestinian statehood? You gave an interview last year. You were asked about the freeze in the peace process, uh, a freeze that you supported. You said the process was suicide. We saved the country. Looking at the violence today, it doesn't look as though you saved the country at all, does it? Well, Tim, you know, um, for the past 100 years, we've had uh, roughly 40 rounds of uh, violence with uh, radical Islam in 1921, 1929, 1936, 1939. And that's this the is, whole point. It's not getting better, th is This it? is nothing new. Uh, and until uh, the Muslim world accepts uh, Israel's uh, right to exist, and we, we were here way before the Islam even started, uh, it, it will go on. But you know what? Amid uh, all this uh, uh, turbulence, Israel is growing. Israel is thriving, uh, as are its people. So I'm very optimistic. And you want separation. This is your policy. Yes. Separation to, to bring about the Jewish majority mm -hmm. that you want in Israel. Your policy is to separate from, from the, Palestinians. the Palestinians. What if large numbers don't want to separate? What are you going to do? Forcible removal? No, anyway, we'll be talking, you're asking if we will do anything that is unilateral? I don't think so. I don't think it's the right move. I think you don't should, think so, or think, you're definitely I think, I not think, going to do it? No, we're not going to do anything unilateral. We tried that in the disengagement, as I, as I said before, and it didn't work out that well. I'm not suggesting to form a Palestinian state in the midst of Israel. I think that would be a profound mistake. I uh, vehemently oppose the notion of forming another failed Arab state in the heart of Israel. That's crazy. Well, the, all the rest are falling apart and disintegrating into tribal uh, uh, structures. So here, we're going to try another artificial one? Why? Do I want to commit suicide? More than 130 countries have recognized, at the UN, have recognized Palestine as a state. And you want the Palestinians to give up forever on this idea of a Palestinian state. You're too late, aren't you? No, I'm not. You know, uh, let me way you, too late for Tim, this. Tim, let me tell you something. I have four children, a uh, 10 year old, eight year old, six, and three. We live just 10 minutes from the proposed Palestinian state. If we were to form a Palestinian state according to these 130 countries and place a radical Islamic state just 10 minutes from my house, I would put my children at a harm's way. Doesn't that, have to be a radical that's Islamic not state, gonna happen. does it? Well, doesn't it does. have to be. Uh, in, in La La Land, it's not. In reality, it is. Because we're not living in a soap opera, Tim. We live in Israel. We live in the heart of the toughest place in the world. What I'm saying is, well, you, don't, you may not like the partner, but you have to work with what it is. I wish we had, I think Yitzhak Rabin said that before me, I wish we had the conflict with the Swedes 
then we can solve it much pretty in, in, a, in, a, in a much easier fashion. We have, a, we have a dispute with the Palestinians and we have to separate from the Palestinians and build the highest wall possible. You said in January last year, if I was Prime Minister tomorrow, that's a deal I would make, building in the blocks in Male Adumim, Ariel, Gush Etzion, in exchange for a freeze outside the blocks. True. But do you think the world is going to buy this? Yes. Why? Why? Because all the I settlements are still seen as illegal and well, an obstacle to peace theories. in the outside world. All there, of them, there whether two, they're in the block or outside. There are two the theories. Block. One that is considering the entire settlements or the entire territories is the one thing, and one that's saying there's a difference. Things have happened. This is the Bushon letter from 2001, saying there is a difference between the big blocks and between what is happening outside the big blocks. What is happening outside the big blocks is probably the future state of Palestine. Inside the big blocks is Israel isn't going to stay Israel, and let's, let's not pretend it's the same. Both Bennett and Lapid see Hamas as a destructive force in the Gaza Strip. Will they manage to form a new solution to this persistent challenge? We have done in Gaza whatever the world has ever asked us to do. We left. We dismantled the settlements. You the went army from standing left. inside no, to standing me, let, outside Let me the finish. Gate. Let me finish. And you know what? We even left them with 3,000 greenhouses for them to build an economy for themselves. And instead of doing so, they have built training camps for the Islamic Jihad and fired until this moment more than 15,000 rockets on our children. And, and you've blockaded and, and, them since 2007 and, yes, are, and you don't even yes, let cement in. Yes, we are in. protecting ourselves. And you stop and we jam wish, and we going in. It, are we not allowed to protect the life of our children? Is this something only the other side has the right to? What is happening is people are using or misusing, should I say, all the rights that are being given in order to promote terror. So if you're allowing them to do all sorts of moving, movements in Gaza, each and every time they've misused it. In 2005, we did the big experiment in Gaza. We did all three things the international community wanted. We pulled back to the 67 lines. We pulled out all our soldiers. And you know what? We expelled 8,000 Jews from their home by force. And what did we get days after? And you the, still the control days, everything that moves they, into no, Gaza and no, goes out of that's Gaza. That's blatantly you wrong. You stood outside. No, because what happened... Even the, David Cameron a few years Tim, ago called it the prison, Tim, didn't he? He said it, it, it was we, a it, 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 was, it was going to be the Singapore of the Middle East. It was open. But then but they... With you guarding the, it? No. With you guarding no, it, was going to be a, the you're, Singapore of the Middle East? Besides the fact that you're stating wrong facts, everything's okay. The reality is quite the contrary. When we gave them Gaza, we said, go build a Singapore. And you, wanna, you know what? They shot thousands of missiles from there onto and Israel, which is why, yes, we need to defend ourselves. What do you do when every centimeter of land that you hand the radical Islamist turns into a base of Iran and radical Islam? What do you do? With the world's eyes on Jerusalem, a Bennett Lapid government will aspire to maintain the status quo in the Israeli capital. But will they manage to keep the city peaceful? The only place in the Middle East that exercises full religious rights for all religions, Christian, Christianity and Muslims and Jews, is Israel. So no one should tell us uh, how to govern Temple Mount. Temple Mount is open for Muslims to pray. And they, roughly two and a half Muslims have prayed at Temple Mount in the past year, while only about 12,000 Jews. That's just, let's put things in well, proportion. Let's also point and we, out that we, there is a large amount of rabbinical advice on this and views that says Jews should not actually pray on the Temple Mount. Wow, well, well, you know, you, now, you, now you you're know representing this. the rabbis. You know that, that, that's a whole you know new, that's a whole you know, new level. You know this. The, but this the, is the status quo, isn't it? That Jews do not, by and large, pray at the Temple I, Mount. I don't dispute the status quo. It will go on. <laughs> Bennett and Lapid have formed what they call a government of healing, which has made history by bringing in an Arab party. Was that move motivated by ideology or political necessity? I think Israel is a Jewish state. I think part of being a Jewish state and a Jewish democracy is making sure the minorities will have their rights. The larger issue, and, and this is something that your president has drawn attention to, he says Israel is sick with racism. These are his words. 
He said last year he's also horrified by the thuggishness that's permeated the national dialogue. Why don't you speak out about that? I will. You know, we have one and a half million Arabs living in Israel. Uh, they exercise full equal rights. They have enjoy all the privileges that every Jew, they vote the for. The president Arkness says there's severe on, discrimination. Uh, 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 I think there are many people in this country who said racist things. Uh, what, you want me to defend now every Israeli? I'm out there. I'm fighting racism in this country. I fight, fight, I'm fighting prejudice in this country. I did things for the Arab citizens of this country, and I will fight for their right, for, for, for the equal rights whenever I can. I always believe reality is stronger than any words. You know, you know very well that one and a half million Israeli Arabs vote for the Knesset, they pay taxes in Israel. That's the reality. There's no place better on earth for Arabs than in Israel. We have to realize that no one's going anywhere. The Jews are here to stay, the Arabs are here to stay. We have to live together.